How's it going everyone? I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. Now like many of you out there, I'm a big fan of Disney and back in the 90s towards the afternoons after school, they had this cartoon series that was a darker, edgier tone for Disney. Again, this was the 90s so like that was on the resurgence and a lot of people fell in love with it, myself included. And lucky for us too, they made a video game about it. So because Halloween vibes are still going on right now, let's sit down and talk about Gargoyles on the Sega Genesis. This game could suck for all we know. Again, I haven't played this in a while, but let's find out together if it's actually good or is it terrible. Gargoyles is a game based on the cartoon series by Disney back in 1995 for the Sega Genesis. I grew up watching this series as it aired and was very happy to see that it was in video game form. A lot of people don't know, but there was going to be a Super Nintendo port of this game at one time. Unfortunately, it was cancelled before getting ported and released around Christmas of that same year. Definitely one of those things that happened during the console wars back then. Anyway, the story of Gargoyles is loosely based on the plot of the cartoon series. You don't get to see anything specific from the show within the game's story, however. In 994 AD, a group of power-crazed Vikings created a devastating weapon known as the Eye of Odin, with the sole purpose of conquering the world. The thing is so damn powerful that it could corrupt anyone who uses it. The Vikings use the Eye of Odin to attack Castle Wyvern, bringing devastation everywhere that they go. The inhabitants of the castle call upon ancient beings known as gargoyles to defend them, which are led by the castle's protector, Goliath. Yeah, that's the same Goliath from the show that we get to play as, but the series of events are way different here. Goliath's battle against the Eye of Odin spans across many centuries, bringing him to Manhattan in the present day. You get some cutscenes in between stages that show the events of the plot, but it's all very light and told through still images and text. This is definitely not up to the same level of quality of storytelling as the cartoon series, but it does give you just enough to enjoy another thing with gargoyles in the title. <laughs> Now I really like the visuals of Gargoyles because it looks fantastic. It was actually done by Buena Vista Interactive and I respect the hell out of their work. These are the same people that would later on go on to be known as Disney Interactive, the same people who also worked on the Aladdin game on the Sega Genesis. Their sprite work and their animations for the different sprites they have in multiple Disney games just looks fantastic. It's such a leap in level of quality compared to other 2D games of the time and it really shows. It looks really awesome and it has that Disney magical touch to it. The one cool thing about Gargoyles' visuals is that not only does it have the 2D animations and the 2D sprites, but it also has an element of 3D sprite work as well. Very similar to games like Donkey Kong Country or anything like Killer Instinct, where it has almost that like 3D kind of like sculpted uh, look to it. You have that same thing within Gargoyles with some of the robotic enemies, and right next to the dark landscapes and the dark visuals and colors of like Manhattan and some of the more modern day levels, it actually looks really freaking good and like meshes so well with everything else. One thing I should mention that's a little bit annoying with this game since it's a Gargoyles game that's licensed by Disney, you don't get to see any of the other characters from the show. Like, there's none of them make an appearance. You don't even get to see Xanatos, who is like the main bad guy of like the entire series. You only get to see Goliath, who you play as, and Demona, who is the love interest slash rival slash, you know, uh, ad, you know, antagonist in some sections of the series. She's the only other character from the show that makes it into this game. And everything else is a lot more generic and a lot more, I guess you could say, streamlined and watered down compared to all the characters and all the plot and the story you got from the show. It's kind of disappointing because it would have been awesome to play some of the other Gargoyles characters like Bronx or Brooklyn or any of the other characters that you see there, especially the ones with a lot of personality that aren't played as like the straight guys compared to Goliath, like it would have been awesome just to see levels built around them. And Disney has done this before with some of their other uh, games and other IPs that they've released for multiple consoles over the years. You saw this in Aladdin with Abu, you saw this in The Lion King when you got to play as Timon and Pumbaa, and other characters in various other Disney games. Why it wasn't done for Gargoyles is beyond me. All that being said, however, let's talk about gameplay because this is where the game starts to get a little bit weird for some people because there's some good stuff in here, but there's also some bad, but in very confusing ways. If you've seen any other Disney games that were developed for the Sega Genesis or the Super Nintendo, then you know exactly what to expect from Gargoyles. You play as Goliath, slashing and jumping your way through multiple stages with the occasional boss fight here and there. There's moments that you'll have bursting through parts of the stage and traversing through some cool environments, but things get rough with the gameplay as you go on. My first big problem I ran into with Gargoyles was with the controls. 
they're very stiff and have moments where they end up being unresponsive. I'll try to make a jump to a platform by running over to it and jumping, only to fall downward and completely miss my mark. Even when I know I hit the button to jump, the game just won't register my input on the controller. This happens with some of your attacks when fighting enemies as well. I took damage many times because I wasn't able to continue attacking my enemies. My button presses just kept dropping randomly and I just stand there idly and get hit. This really sucked when I had to deal with some of the tougher robot enemies in the modern day, which take a ridiculous amount of hits to defeat and deal massive amounts of damage as well. It definitely makes getting through some stages a bit frustrating. Boss fights suffer from the same issue, but I found that the majority of boss fights can be defeated easily with the diving attack that Goliath has. You just jump up and drop right on top of them for massive damage, then rinse and repeat until they're defeated. <laughs> These issues that I bring up, I feel ruin a lot of sections towards the later portions of the game. It's just stuff that I know you could kind of fiddle around with and try to be a little bit more careful to get around and make it work for you. But I also feel at the same time, if the game went through a little bit more testing and actually got passed through a few more hands, all that stuff could have been ironed out and could have been improved a lot better just to not only make the controls feel better, but just make the game flow better overall. However, there is one thing that really bugs me as a fan of the series. You don't get to fly in this game. What? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. This is something that really bothered me a lot. You could double jump with Goliath throughout the entirety of the game and use vents to push you upwards through stages sometimes, but you don't ever fly at any point in the game. This is super weird because Goliath and the rest of the gargoyles could fly in the show, so it's weird not having that ability to do so in the game. Not having a stage built around flying, it seems like a really big missed opportunity. The devs could have gotten super creative with something in the modern stages and showcase some cool views of Manhattan. It would have been really neat to have a flying stage where you fight enemies in the mid-air over New York City. Maybe there could have been a stage where you have to avoid obstacles and avoid enemies that are attacking you. Kind of like what was done with the magic carpet stage in the Aladdin game that was also done by Disney. Maybe this was done on purpose to avoid taking up too much time to make new stages, but it's such an odd thing to ignore. I don't know people, it just seems like such a weird and like glaring omission to not have flying or a flying stage or some element of flying in this game that's based off of a series that has characters literally flying all the time. It's just so weird to me. Technical reasons aside, I just don't understand why Disney didn't get too creative when it came to actually having other stages, maybe implementing some of the other characters that I mentioned beforehand, where flying was a big part of it. Because, like I said, in almost every episode of the series, the gargoyles are flying over the streets of New York when they're in the modern day. Like, I just don't know why you don't implement that into the game in some way. I mean, the vents are cool, the double jump is fine, but... Goliath has wings. He can fly in the show. Why can't he fly in the game in some way? I don't know. It's just weird to me. Like I said, maybe it's just a me thing, but let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comment section. I just feel like they could have had at least some stage or something to really kind of break things up or at least, you know, had that element of the show put in the game or at least represented in the game in some way, even if it wasn't a big thing. At least have it there somehow. Since there isn't really much else to say about it, can I recommend that you guys check out Gargoyles on the Sega Genesis? To be honest with you, not really. Unless you're a big fan of the series and you could look past a lot of the different things that I said were wrong with it, this game will give you a little bit of fun as an action platformer, but I mean, if you're a huge fan of the series and you were hoping to see a lot of your favorite characters in here, you're not really going to get that. I do feel that some of the unresponsive controls and some of the other issues I mentioned here and there can be a bit of a problem, especially towards the later portions of the game. But if you're able to look past all of that and you just want to play another fun or interesting Disney game, especially one from the 16-bit era, like I said, you'll get a little bit of fun out of this, but don't feel like you're missing anything if you decide to skip over it. <laughs> So yeah, those are my thoughts about Gargoyles on the Sega Genesis. Personally for me, I don't know if the game has really aged all that well. Like granted, this was done in the mid 90s, but it still looks pretty nice. I mean, most Disney games that were developed by Disney Interactive or Buena Vista look nice well after they've been released. But as far as gameplay wise, it's kind of meh. But as always, with any game that I review on this channel, those are just my opinions about Gargoyles. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. Tell me, is Gargoyles one of your favorite series, or did you like the game, or did you hate the game? What are some of your other favorite Disney-related games, or games that were released by Disney, that you actually enjoy playing? 
Put all that stuff down below in the comment section. And you know, the Halloween vibes aren't over yet. There's still a little bit of time to really play something that's truly Halloween themed, that's a lot more horror-esque than anything else than what we've been playing on this channel. I mean, I'm talking about something that's really horror, that's like really creepy and really scary and like really fits into the theme of the month. Now that I think about it, I'm actually in the mood for something that's unfinished. I'm not saying exactly what it is, but know that I am thinking about it.